Hey guys, it's Mark. So if you're new to our channel, Tanya and I are converting this Ram ProMaster 2500 into a mobile home on wheels. And we spent the last couple days up on the roof, not only installing the roof rack, but the solar panels as well. So they are bolted in, they are wired, they're producing electricity. So we're gonna show you exactly how we did it and how we wired them up. So hit that subscribe button and follow along. So our goal for today is to install this thing. So you've seen this in pretty much every video for running solar wires. This is the piece that sits on your roof and then the solar wires poke through here. They go through a hole in your ceiling and down to your solar charge controller. So things you're gonna need, you're gonna need this guy. So this basically is a, um, it's got a couple of screws, it's got some rubber gaskets to make it watertight. You basically loosen this nut. It has a, um, sort of a diaphragm underneath it. You stick the wire through, tighten this down, and it clamps down on the wire. You're gonna need some solar wire. I've got uh, eight gauge solar wire here. You probably don't need anything more than 10. I just happen to use eight. We're gonna to need to make a hole in the roof, so we'll need a drill bit. And once we make that hole, as usual, we file it, and then we clean it up with some Rust-Oleum to prevent any rust. After we've got the holes drilled, we'll go ahead and put these grommets in, and these grommets will keep the wires from scratching against the metal. And unfortunately, my kit doesn't tell how big to make this hole, but I kind of measured these with some calipers, and it looks like the hole has to be about 7 16 of an inch to fit those. So we're gonna drill a 7 16 of an inch hole with that thing. Uh, we will use Sikaflex 221 to clamp it down some lap seal to keep it watertight, and then butyl tape. I'm starting to think you can solve pretty much all the world's problems with butyl tape, but because the van has these kind of ridges in the ceiling that go up and down, this thing kind of sits, it's wider than the ridges, so we'll build up the um, one side of it with a bunch of butyl tape to keep it nice and watertight. So that's what you need, and let's get to it. So we're on top of the roof, this is um, the frontmost solar panel. The second one will go here. The wires will actually start, the solar panel box will be there, and then the wires feed this way. So the plan is to put the, um, the inlet right around here. Now, as you can see, it sort of hangs over. It's longer than the ribs of the, of the ceiling. But what I've seen a bunch of people do is basically just sit it like that and then fill in this area with butyl tape. And it seems to work fine. We're going to put some Sikaflex on here to hold it down anyway, so it really should be, it really should be okay. So our plan now is to make two screw, two uh, holes with this drill bit, one right next to the other. Then we'll go ahead and clean them off, uh, put on some paint to prevent rust, and then we'll start feeding the wires. I gotta tell you, you could do this a thousand times, but making holes in the roof of your van, still pretty scary. All right, let's get this thing cleaned up. We're gonna vacuum up all the particles and then we're going to um, start to clean out the holes before we put the grommets in. So while the paint is drying on the roof, I thought I'd take a minute and tell you specifically why we chose these solar panels. So we knew that on our roof we would only be able to fit two solar panels because we want to have a little roof deck. We've already got the AC unit and the max air fan, so we'd only be able to fit two of them. So we knew we wanted them to be 200 watt panels. Now the problem is most 200 watt panels, the length is more than the, the width of the ProMaster, so it would have hung over on each side which we didn't want. And we didn't want to run them lengthwise because it would just have taken up way too much room on the roof. So we found two companies that make a 200 watt solar panel that will fit across the ProMaster. One is Rich Power and the other one is New Power. 
New Power, I believe, has two models of it. This is the model that just came out. So this is a 200 watt solar panel, but this one has nine bus bars. So if you look at each one of these segments, uh, you'll see nine bus bars across. So I'm not exactly sure what that does. I've been trying to read on it, but I don't completely understand it. It's supposed to be more efficient in how it produces electricity. It certainly is more resistant to cracks. So the idea is that if one of these should get a micro crack in it somewhere, we'd only be losing one ninth of the power, not one third or one fifth if you had uh, bigger buses in here. So the nine bus bar uh, 200 watt solar panel is supposed to be really good. So we're really excited to use it. We haven't tested it out yet, but that's specifically why we went for this size panel because it fits east to west on the van and it's 200 watts. So. That's why we chose and gives us 400 watts in total. So let's head back up top of the van. The paint should be drying. We should be able to get our grommets in. So at this point, the paint is dry and we're gonna go ahead and insert the grommets to protect the wires. So this will basically shield the wires from touching any of the exposed metal and possibly getting cut. All right, so those are both in there, and now we can go ahead and start feeding the wires through. By the way, we had uh, one of our viewers commented on the fact that our solar panels are so low to the uh, roof of the van, and he's absolutely right. So it certainly would be better for us to have, from a from a just an electronic perspective, it'd be great if we had these things raised a little higher to allow for some airflow underneath. The panels would certainly work better. Uh, if they didn't get so hot, they'll be a little less efficient, probably this close. So I think the recommendation is probably a couple inches higher than this, but we really like the look. So a lot of this stuff is just um, compromise, right? You, you sacrifice sometimes the look for um, some additional functionality and sometimes you do the reverse. So we're happy with the way this is. But the nice thing about these flush mount adapters is if we do realize we want to raise the panels a little bit. We can simply lift out the panels, turn the flush mount adapters upside down, and then the panels will actually sit above the 8020, and that'll give us an extra couple inches. So we've got that capability or that option in there if we need it. But thank you for that comment. It was really helpful and totally spot on. So now the fun part, we thread the wire through the housing. So the way this thing works is it's got this sort of diaphragm thing that holds the wire in place you can slide the wire through it pretty easily as you tighten this down it basically tightens down these teeth and then holds the wire in place really snug so when you go to feed the wire through make sure you put it through the cap first not like I did the first time and then we'll just feed it through completely to the end and then we'll get up on the roof so these will attach to our solar panels, which we're gonna wire in series. I'll explain that in a second. And these will feed through the roof and connect to the solar charge controller. So let's get up there. I wish y'all could see like a little bit more of behind the scenes because Mark works. I do some housework. Yup, let's get up there. And then we eat and then we look at the project and then we talk about it, and then we go back inside, and then I have to go put lipstick on, and then I come back outside, and then Mark gets a few more things, and then we, do some, we watch some more YouTube videos, and then we talk about it, and then we come outside. <laughs> so this is, this is Mark getting everything ready, you see, there's Mark. Say hi, Mark. I uh, kind of feel like I'm giving the van a colonoscopy. You're this getting, is what it must be like. You're getting very personal with the van. I'm telling you, this is what it must be like for the doctor. Just stay there, Mr. Varela. Nothing to see here. We are going to feed these all the way through. The grommets are gonna keep them from getting cut on the metal. So I've actually seen other van lifers use this stuff instead of Sikaflex. So they basically adhere the, um, the housing to the 
van with this tape and apparently it works really well. I just got the stuff so I was uh, planning on using um, some Sikaflex but I'm going to try with this tape because if we could hold this on there and then just fill in the sides that would be good because um, if it ever has to come off and we've got Sikaflex on it it's not going to be so easy. So next step is to put some of this that looks Under. like 3M. This is 3M, and 3M pretty much rocks. Right. So we've got this uh, 3M tape on the bottom of here, and I'll use some alcohol to just clean everything, make sure the adhesive on the tape is not going to be, is going to hold up really well. So that's clean. And now we'll take the paper off the tape. So we're going to try to stick this down in here. Oh my gosh. 3M definitely knows how to make tape. That's holding up well. What we'll do now is build up the sides with butyl tape, put some weight on it, and let it sit. So we have just wired up the solar panels. And we're doing this in series, so you can either do them in parallel or in series. The benefit of doing them in series is that the amperage stays the same, so the current stays low, so the wire size stays low, and the voltage builds up. So that's how electricity goes across those big wires outside your house. Basically, the energy is produced. It's stepped up to massive voltages. Current stays low. It's sent out to your neighborhood, and then it's stepped down again and used in your home. I think we talked about this a few videos back. So basically the red wire comes out from the inside the, from our solar charge controller connects to this solar panel this solar panel connects to here and then the black wire goes back into the van so it's just one continuous circuit so now we've just got to uh, put some lap sealant on that and figure out how we're going to tie these wires so we don't hear that while we're driving yep okay so the lap sealant's on, I forgot to videotape it. Now we just gotta find a way to cover it up because it's wet now and it's sticky. And in a half an hour, it'll be full of pollen and wasps and gosh knows what else. So we're gonna cover it up, let it dry, then we'll move the wires and uh, we'll zip tie the wires and then screw down the solar panel. So we're just gonna let this sit for about an hour and dry and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're pretty much done, right? So let's lift this so we can show everybody what we've done. You, you want to see? We took some foam tubing and we wrapped it around all the electrical wiring underneath here so we don't hear them flopping around. This is just cheap tubing we got from Home Depot. Yes. That's and. It wrap it around and then press it together to seal it. That's it. Hey guys, so we are done with the solar panel. So we went ahead and ran the wires through the, through the roof of the van. We have bolted these things down. Uh, we have put some rubber uh, hosing around the wire so they don't slap around when we're driving. And everything is locked in place, looking really good. And we used an, a voltmeter downstairs, down in the van, and we're already getting voltage from these things. So super exciting to have that. Um, one note, on the last uh, video we did, Tanya told you how when we installed this 12 volt air conditioner, we put some caulking around the bottom of it and that stuff got messed up with pollen and everything. We went ahead and pulled it all out, uh, called the company and they said, you don't even need to uh, put any kind of lap seal into caulking around the edge. 
They said it'll be fine with just what's on the inside. So we're really excited, it's done. So we are actually done with the roof up until about the end of these solar panels. We've already ordered our composite decking. It'll be in in two weeks and then we'll get to that. Prior to that, we'll get the wind fairing in and then we are already starting on the cabinets inside. So a lot of exciting stuff going on. So thanks so much for joining us. Please give us a like or a thumbs up if you would and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to follow along on our entire van builds process. So thanks for joining and we'll see you next time.